so that many of them have lost uh, a value, uh, and that the, the root problem of the, the inability of some of these pension funds to pay their benefits is a result of the stock market more than anything else, isn't it? Well, yes, but the stock market being down, I contend, is a result of tax policy, that it is these tax cuts that are making us poor. But, Juan, there's a very interesting pattern here. Social Security has dedicated funding. It has a surplus of over $2 trillion in it. The Republicans keep trying to make people think it's the cause of the deficit. The Wisconsin pension is 99.7 percent funded. By the alternative measure used, it's more than 90 percent funded. And it's under attack. How interesting that the best financed government programs, the ones that provide benefits to ordinary working people, are the ones that are being attacked by creating this impression, this false impression, that they are the cause of the problem. You, don't, you know, in, in, in the U.S. last year, states and local governments gave at least $70 billion to corporations. Here in western New York, where I live, one of the counties gave Verizon uh, it, effectively, over $600 million to create 200 jobs that'll pay, I expect, about $50,000 on average. That's crazy. That's just, that's over $3 million per job. Yahoo got a deal at over $2 million per job. Alcoa has a deal for cheap electricity from the public that's way beyond the wages of the workers. These are massive transfers of money from you and me and the audience in this show to the already wealthy, because they're not running their businesses well enough to make profits on their own. So why do we have massive subsidies and welfare for these very large corporations and attack well-funded government programs? Uh, uh, David K. Johnson, I want to ask you about this issue of corporate taxes and recent comments made by former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty, the likely 2012 Republican presidential contender. On Saturday, he was interviewed by Lee Fang of the website thinkprogress.org. Uh, Governor, uh, today, uh, liberals are demonstrating all over the country in what CBS has called a liberal version of the Tea Party. Their main complaint is that a lot of corporations aren't paying their, their fair share. For example, Bank of America in 2009 paid nothing in corporate income taxes, the same with ExxonMobil, GE, and a lot of other big corporations. Do you think corporations like Bank of America should pay their fair share? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think actually the corporate tax rate in Minnesota and in the country is too high. And uh, one of the things I think we could and should do for Do you think zero country. is too high with uh, Bank of well, America paying the, nothing? We have the highest corporate tax rate, or one of them in the But they use, they use loopholes in offshore bank accounts to pay nothing. Well, one of the things I've, I've called for is reducing tax rates and looking at exemptions or special deals within the tax code that gives certain companies privileges or, or benefits. I can't speak to what a, any individual country or company would get in that regard, but I think one uh, goal or direction for tax reform is to do it, uh, simplify and reduce tax rates and clean out as many of the special deals as possible. To be clear, uh, do you think Bank of America pays too much in taxes already? I think he, I think he answered that question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know firsthand what Bank of America pays in taxes, but I, I will just say, setting aside Bank of America, the t corporate tax rate in the United States of America is too high compared to our competitor nations. Probable presidential contender Tim Pawlenty interviewed by thinkprogress.org. Um, David K. Johnston, your response. Well, corporate income taxes in this country are one-third lower than they were in 2000. That's in my column this morning at tax.com. Uh, even though corporate profits are up 60 percent and corporations have almost $2 trillion in cash, they're approaching $7,000 of cash for every man, woman, and child in the United States. They're not investing this money. They're not creating jobs. They are hoarding this money that they have pulled out of the economy. It's one of the reasons we're in so much trouble. Now, as to the argument that our tax rate is too high, uh, it is because of all of these special favors. The reason the tax code has grown and grown and grown and grown and grown isn't because of people like you and me and the audience. It's because of all these favors being bought from politicians. Uh, at tax.com, we have something called the Shelf Project, and eminent authorities in tax have shown how we could raise a trillion dollars a year. That would double the revenue we get. Uh, it's equal to the revenue we get from the individual income tax by shutting down loopholes and favors for businesses, particularly the oil and gas and pharmaceutical industries. Uh, the fact is, the very largest corporations, the ones who are the vast majority of wealth in America, 
uh, they pay an effective tax rate of about 15% of their profits. And one fundamental truth people need to know, Amy, you can't have an individual income tax if you don't have a corporate income tax, because otherwise wealthy individuals who own businesses will simply live off their business and the businesses will become storehouses of untaxed wealth. That's one of the big problems in our tax system. You know, the, the hedge fund manager, John Paulson, made $9 billion in the last two years. Unless he chose to take money out of his plan, he pays no taxes on that money. You can make a billion dollars or $5 billion a year in a single year and pay no taxes for years or decades into the future while working people have their taxes taken out every week. And, and you mentioned that corporate taxes are down about 30 percent since uh, 2000. But take us back a, a few decades f uh, further back. Uh, how has the tax rate, especially at the high income, personal income level and corporate uh, tax rate, uh, trended in the United States since the 50s and 60s? Well, there's another column of mine at tax.com. I'm sorry to sound like an advertising machine. Uh, that shows that in 19, since from 1961 to 2006, the very highest income taxpayers have had their tax burden reduced 60 percent, while everybody else has had a reduction of 20 percent. And it's the incomes at the top that have exploded. The corporate tax rate used to be 50 percent, now it's 35 percent. And, and let me make some of what I think is a very important counterintuitive argument. When tax rates are low, I believe there is a sound argument that it destroys jobs. The reason is, you uh, imagine for a moment you're a plutocrat. Uh, that you're very, very, very wealthy and you own a business and your spouse wants to buy a, a Modigliani painting to hang in your living room that costs $85 million. If the tax rate's 50 percent, it's going to cost $170 million to, take, to get that painting. If the tax rate's 15 percent, it only costs $100 million. You're far more likely to withdraw the $100 million than the 170. million. We used to have a high corporate tax rate as a way to uh, coerce uh, and, and encourage owners of businesses to reinvest in the business, which creates more jobs. We've now replaced it with a system that encourages them to withdraw money and not reinvest it. And that's what the cash you're seeing is about. It's about the proliferation of corporate personal jets, not owned by the company, but by individuals, uh, of people who own six and seven and eight and nine mansions. Remember, John McCain couldn't remember how many homes his family had. And so low tax rates destroy jobs. They encourage withdrawals from business instead of encouraging owners to keep reinvesting in the business. David K. Johnston, we want to thank you for being with us. Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist, his most recent book, Free Lunch, How the Wealthiest Americans Enrich Themselves at Government Expense and Stick You with the Bill, former New York Times reporter, now writes at tax.com. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.